What's up, Periscope, and welcome to another edition of Berg is the Word. My name is Mark Berg, and recording this on Tuesday night, and recording this ahead of tomorrow night, Wednesday night's Duke, North Carolina basketball game, a powerhouse matchup between two longtime ACC rivals. And tonight's discussion question is this. Tickets are now selling on the resale market for about three grand, $3,000 minimum. And my question to you is this, at what point will college freshmen stop playing an entire season? A lot like you'll see college athletes not playing their team's respective bowl games before deciding to enter, hey, I want to go pro. And the question, the reason why I ask this question is this, a lot of people are attributing the high ticket value to tomorrow night's game, to Wednesday night's game, to the star power of Zion Williamson. And so the question I'm asking you tonight is this. If Zion Williamson were to just decide, you know what, I don't want to play basketball at Duke anymore, I don't feel like getting injured, and I want to pursue my pro career and do what's best for me, stop playing for Duke, and decide to train and to prepare for the NBA draft come this summer. Would anyone still not draft him as a top three draft selection? And that is really the basis of my question. And it's not just Zion for Duke either. Zion obviously, you know, gets a lot of the notoriety with his slam dunks. Yes, there is more to his game beyond just his tremendous leaping and vertical leap, his leaping at, uh, ability and his vertical leap. But they've also got Cam Reddish and RJ Barrett, two other players who are likely to be lottery picks in next summer's NBA draft, this summer's NBA draft come June. But again, that's kind of the question that I have is, we've seen a lot of college football players decide to not play in their team's respective bowl games to prepare for the NFL draft. At some point, could we see college basketball players do the same? Certainly, I would expect this to be the case if a team only made the NIT. I was listening to a podcast with Chris Bosch and Bill Simmons, and Chris Bosch actually played in Georgia Tech's NIT game. And really the answer is, if you're going to be a lottery pick, what's really the point? Again, if you're any NBA team right now and Zion Williamson just decided, hey, you know what? I'm not going to risk injury. Even, and this is even if you take out an insurance policy, which I'll get to in a minute. But if you were an NBA team and you asked yourself the question, if Zion Williamson just stopped playing this season and says, you know what, I want to focus on my NBA career. I really respect Duke for allowing me this scholarship and being able to play to this point. But at this time, I've decided to forego the, edu the education I'm receiving from Duke and I've decided I want to focus on my pro career before the start of the NBA draft to avoid and mitigate any risk of injury. If you were an NBA team with a top three pick in the 2019 draft, would this prevent you from wanting to draft Zion Williamson? So that's the question that I have is at what point will we start seeing that from individual players in college basketball, if ever? And again, if I were advising Zion Williamson, this is a distinct possibility that I would consider. And so this might seem a little bit extreme. Let me walk you through this really quickly though. College, colleges now allow student athletes to take out insurance policies. And a large reason of this has to do with former South Carolina star running back Marcus Lattimore. Who was Marcus Lattimore? He was a five-star recruit, a star running back at South Carolina, who had not one, but two significant knee injuries, and he was never the same player once he went to the NFL. I believe he went to the Broncos. He just wasn't quite able to cut it, and he wasn't the same caliber player that he was prior to his knee injuries. He felt his stock fell in the draft. He wasn't as talented, and ultimately couldn't stay healthy to sustain any type of athletic career. So I'm sure that, you know, these star athletes, I would hope that Zion, Cam Riddish, and RJ Barrett all have insurance policies. But again, if you were an NBA team drafting in the top three and Zion just said, you know what, I I'm for this reason, I'm not going to continue to play for Duke. I'd like to focus on my pro career and to focus on getting my best value for that. I really appreciate the opportunity Duke has provided me to this point, 
but I've decided I'm going to focus on my career. Would that prevent you from drafting him within the top three picks? And the answer to that question, if I were in that situation, is no. So again, at what point? And again, I get Duke's the number one team in the country, and they have aspirations to go on and win a national championship this year. But is Zion Williamson even seeing a dime of any of that money? If the tickets to tomorrow's game at Cameron Indoor Stadium are selling for three grand a piece minimum, and Zion Williamson isn't seeing a dime of that, at what point is is the the benefit of the exposure in a primetime game on ESPN at one of the most iconic sports venues in all of sports even worth it because you're still deemed an amateur? And I really want you to think about this. At what point is a college player, and even if a team's going to the NCAA tournament, at what point will college basketball players take a, a, a note from their fellow student athletes that are football players who have decided, you know what, for this team's, for my team's meaningless bowl game, I understand the brotherhood aspect and wanting to play with your teams again. Uh, someone says hi on Periscope. Hello, thank you for tuning in. But at what point does, do, do you ask yourself the question of, you know, is it even worth it for me to continue playing for this college if I'm going to be a lottery pick come June? If I'm going to be a lottery pick at the NBA draft, at what point is the exposure and everything that I'm getting? And look, you might, the counter argument to this might be, well, you might say, well, hey, Zion is getting an education from Duke. It's not some other, you know, school that has a lesser education. But my counter to someone who said, who, who uses the education argument is this. What is the purpose of Zion Williamson attending Duke University? It's to play basketball. It's to be a one and done player. At what point do players become, maybe even play only a half season to get that exposure, to get their tape so scouts can see it? Really, to me, at this point, barring a major injury, is there any doubt that Zion Williamson is a lottery pick? There is none. There is absolutely no question, especially when you consider his statistics, some of his highlights. North Carolina coach Roy Williams even said, even said that there is no one in the college game he has seen anyone quite like Zion. He says, you know, yes, there was LeBron, but LeBron didn't go to college. So then again, my question is this, and I don't understand why no one's bringing this up, because there are a lot of people that are going to watch tomorrow night's game in prime time. But if you're a college athlete, again, at what point do you ask yourself, if I'm still deemed an amateur, why am I, why am I continuing to play for this university? And especially considering that tickets are selling for three grand a piece. Three grand on StubHub right now. I would expect that to fluctuate between now and tip off between now and 9 p.m. Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. But again, I don't understand why no one is asking this question of at what point do college basketball players take a footnote from the football players and say this? It's not worth it for me to continue to play as a student athlete at my respective university because I know I'm going to be an NBA lottery pick. And this wouldn't work for, you know, this only works for the very, very elite talent. I'm talking the Zion Williamson's of the world, Cam Riddish, RJ Barrett. All three of those freshmen for Duke are expected to go in the NBA lottery for the 2019 NBA draft this summer. And can you, could you imagine the uproar that would happen if this were to happen, that they weren't loyal? Uh, I've got a viewer from Thailand. Thank you so much for checking in. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, if you're enjoying this discussion, please feel free to share it with friends. But could you imagine the uproar in the arguments with, uh, of people who say, oh, you know, this player isn't loyal to this university for providing this platform, the education, and everything that college athletes get. But at the same time, if you're a student athlete of the caliber of talent of Zion Williamson, you at least have to ask yourself the question. I would love to know if he's insured, a lot like other star college athletes do, in case he gets injured. You certainly don't wish that or hope that upon any player, even a rival, but we'll see what happens. Duke, a nine and a half point favorite 
in Wednesday night's game. North Carolina is 15-8-2 against the spread this season. Duke is 15-10, over under around 165 for tomorrow night's game. Again, I get that Duke's number one in the country, and they're aspiring for an NCAA championship. And you might argue that Zion's legend and his mystique might rise even higher if he were to win a national championship in what certainly will be his lone season at Duke. But after a certain point, and again, if you were an NBA GM, wouldn't you still draft the guy with a top three pick, even if he were to decide, hey, I'm done playing this season for Duke? And so what is the benefit for Zion continuing to play for Duke when we've seen what he can do to this point in the season? He's been tremendous. He's been absolutely tremendous for Duke. And it's not just the dunks. I could get into his defense, how he's you know, at least a respectable outside shooter, how his leaping ability is great. A lot of his, his blocks have, uh, from a defensive standpoint, all the things that he brings to the table. It's pretty remarkable. But again, tickets going for around three grand tomorrow night. A lot of people are comparing it to the Super Bowl. You have to keep in mind that Cameron Indoor Stadium, significantly smaller than Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, only a fraction of the same capacity. Cameron Indoor Stadium holds 9,314 people. So there are also reports, too, that former President Barack Obama will be at tomorrow night's game. We'll see if that is, in fact, true on Wednesday night. But again, I would want to know at what point do we see not even a one-and-done player, but maybe a half-and-done player. And this might sound crazy to you, but if you go and look back at what point, what more would Zion Williamson, Cam Reddish, and R.J. Barrett need to show you this season for you to want to say, hey, I would want to draft this guy for my respective NBA organization if you were an owner or a GM. What more would they really have to prove? And again, I get that Duke's number one, and again, they want to win an, an ACC championship and an NCAA championship. But again, I was listening to this podcast where Bill Simmons and Chris Bosh are talking. Chris Bosh's lone season at Georgia Tech, he decided to play in his team's NIT game. And it wasn't even the NCAA tournament. And at that point, it was pretty evident that he was at least going to be a first-round pick, wound up being a lottery pick. And again, at what point do the pros of the exposure of playing at the NCAA level outweigh what could potentially happen and how you're going to continue to train and prepare for the NBA draft? And again, you don't want the worst to happen. I'm not wishing that upon anyone, but I think more people should ask the question of, of at what point... Will college basketball players say, hey, this is not worth it for me to get to the next level? And again, when I say college basketball players, I mean the elite level talent like a Zion Williamson. This would not work for a player who needs as much exposure and as much game experience as possible when trying to get to the next level. This is only for, when I'm talking about this, it's for the elite talent at the college game. I'll leave you with one more example before signing off. Uh, the ESPN 30 for 30 documentary that came out Several months, maybe a year ago, one and not done about the Kentucky Wildcats uh, basketball program and really follows John Calipari's journey from UMass to Memphis to Kentucky. They use the example of DeJuan Wagner. Who's DeJuan Wagner? Former guard that played for Calipari at Memphis who was a one-and-done player, and he had a colitis condition, so he had to have his colon removed and Dijuan Wagner, who was supposed to be a star guard, only lasted in the NBA for five seasons, was supposed to be a stud guard when the Cleveland Cav Cavaliers drafted him in the first round. And Calipari used that example as to say, hey, this is why I really push players to be one and done, to go make their money for when they can, because you never know what will happen. And if that's the case for him to push a player to be one and done, at what point will we start to see college players only play part of the season or to decide to forego the postseason with their team because it isn't worth it for their for, because it isn't worth it for their professional careers? At what point will we see elite talent to say, "Hey, I'm going to stop playing for this respective university because I have aspirations of being a star NBA player and a star pro athlete." We'll see. And we've already seen it in the college football game as well. 
you've enjoyed this discussion, please feel free to share it with your friends again. Tomorrow night's game, 9 o'clock Wednesday night, prime time, 9 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. Duke, North Carolina. Duke, a 9.5 point favorite over North, uh, over North Carolina. So we'll see what happens at Cameron Indoor Stadium. But again, this has been another edition of Berg is the Word. My name is Mark Berg, and I hope all of you have a fantastic rest of your Tuesdays and rest of your work week. I'll see you next time. I do this every single day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care. So long, everyone.